the words of Nigerians that we kill. For the power of life and death is in your tongue. And if there are one million people saying death and only one person saying life, God will answer the one person because he's willing to show mercy all the time. And today I call our family member, thank God for, this is a combined service, for a 40-day negativity fast that will end March 1st. That will take us to the Avalanche March 31st. Some people are already doing a 21-day Daniel fast. And um, you can also take a, a fast. You can skip a meal for these 40 days. All I want you to do is that anytime they say there is destruction, say life. Don't speak negative about this nation. Don't speak. Whether, even if you are seeing it, it's a fact, not the truth. So I will encourage our house, whether it's your post on every social media network, don't rebroadcast killing. Am I saying they are not killing? Yes. Don't rebroadcast things that will make people's hearts to, to be bitter. And who knows whether it's the truth so that you don't become a witness to a lie. Anywhere you see death, destruction, for the thief cometh to steal, kill, and destroy. Anywhere you see stealing, killing, and destruction, the God is not of God. But you see, stealing, killing, and destruction is sin, and sin has consequences. The consequences of um, Shedding innocent blood is sin, and sin has consequences. And when the consequences is coming, people will think it's the judgment of God. It's not. If you fall from this, jump down from this four-story building and fall to the ground and meet concrete justice, it's not God that pushed you. It's the consequences of your fall. Every sin has consequences. God created a perfect world. When sin entered. When sin entered the world, everything, everything, sickness, death, everything entered. It was deformed. But Jesus came and, and, came, to ha uh, and came to give life and give it more abundantly. So I will encourage you, 41, 21 days, the different thinking, devotional, uh, day by day declaration, and even your dev devotional, begin to declare. Declare over this nation. Declare. I call us again, as we called on May 5th, 2014. And we began to do open heavens prayer. I call again. That within this period of the 40 days, every 12 noon, if you can't be in the prayer house, in your locations, or this, and set your affection towards us. As the sun is high in the sky, the Bible says in Malachi 4 2, the sun, S U N, of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wing. Nigeria ha has only one time zone. That means at 12 noon, the whole, the, the, the sun is highest. And we are saying that as the sun is rising over Nigeria, Lord, healing. Healing in our land. The people that are bitter, emotionally wounded, speak to them. Nobody could preach to Paul. It was Jesus that appeared. So any person concocting evil anywhere, Jesus will appear. God put us here for a reason. Are things working well all the no? But I can assure you, it's not anywhere too. Everything is not perfect anywhere. But God put you here for a reason. And it's now time for you, if you want to pray about elections, this is the time. So that even God will show you who to vote for. So that even if your brother is contesting and the other person is contesting, God will tell you vote for the other person. 
Amen. Some of you are looking at me. I'm telling you. And it's time more than ever before we need to pray. Praise the Lord. That's why the 40 days negativity fast. And you'll be declaring positive. Oh, Nigeria. Nigeria. No, 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 no. Nigeria is going higher. We achieve purpose. Things are rising. And things will go on. Nigeria used close to about three, about close to three billion dollars to stop war in two countries. The countries that can't give them anything, no oil to take, no natural resources to take. We spent our money to stop those civil war. No country on the face of the earth has done that. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. We bless you. Even as your word come, bless us. Turn things around. Let us become a family of worshippers. In Jesus' name. Our main text for this, for the 21 days is John chapter 4. So instructive to me. I try to meditate on that scripture. And um, we have been talking about Experiencing his love, sharing his love. By February, we'll be having our family workshop and our family week. And also, it will end in the, in the school of uh, family and uh, life development. And um, I, I will encourage you to be part of that school. And there was so much inner healing. And we will be starting a series that time. Or the main theme for our, for our church then will be a family of God. A family of God. In John chapter 4 verse 21 to 30 in the Passion Translation. It says, believe me dear woman. The time has come when you won't worship the Father on a mountain. Not in, not in Jerusalem. But in your heart. Your people don't really know the one they worship. We just worship out of our experience. For it's from the Jews that the salvation is made, that salvation is made available. Now from here, from here on, worshiping the Father will not be a matter of the right place, but with the right heart. For God is a spirit and he longs to have sincere worshipers who worship and adore him in the realm of the spirit and in truth. The woman said, this is also confusing, but I do know that the anointed one is coming, the true Messiah. When he comes, he will tell us everything we need to know. Jesus said to her, you don't have to wait any longer. The anointed one is here speaking with you. I'm the one you are looking for. At that moment, the disciples returned. And we are stunned to see Jesus speaking with the Samaritan woman. Yet none of them dared to ask him why or what they were discussing. All at once, the woman dropped her water jar, ran off to her village, and told everyone. Verse 29. He said, come and meet a man. At the well, who told me everything I've ever done? It could be the anointed one we have been waiting for. Hearing this, the people came streaming out of the village to see Jesus. And so, John chapter 4, the Bible says, and Jesus needed to go through Samaria. And the only thing I believe he needed to do was to, was to go to Samaria and talk and meet the church. I want to be talking about a family of worshippers. You, you see, it's Jesus talking to the to the Samaritan woman was not was not a, a coincidence. The Bible says Jesus came to the well and sat down by the well. I'm sure he sat at the edge towards the mouth. Why? Because. You must understand that this well that is there is, this, is the Jacob's well that is, that is a spring-filled well. It's the normal earthly well being, being, being energized by the Adamic fallen nature. And sitting on that well, he said, no more, is the living water. Who came to seal the well? The well that we normally drink from that will never ever satisfy us. Nothing on earth will satisfy you. Nothing. Whether pleasure, whether fame, whether power, whether possessions, will never satisfy. Because what you love, you will never be satisfied with. 
And so you must understand that when Jesus sat down there, there was a prophetic significance. That no more here, and he said, give me drink. Imagine somebody sitting on the well and say, give me drink. And the woman coming empty with empty bucket. No drink. You must understand that Jesus is not looking for people who he wants to condemn. God is looking for a family of worshippers. Look at somebody say, you are, we're family. You see, sometimes when we pray some prayer, Jesus looked at his disciples and told, and, and they asked his, and his disciples asked him, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. And Jesus gave them a model prayer. And the model prayer started from with our father. And if you go down the line of that prayer, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily.